Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Amen. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Great things he continues to do. What a joy it is for us to meet again and dominion. Hallelujah. Anywhere in the world you are, great day to you. Morning, afternoon, or night. Bless you. Happy to be on with you once more as we journey in our 90 days marathon. Hallelujah. Now we're doing 24 hours per day. Prayer. Hallelujah. Isn't God amazing? God is amazing. Hallelujah. So believers, at this moment, I want to say special greetings to all the members of the clergy. Um, wherever you're from, happy to have you on. To all the Dominion family, grace and peace be you, yours, CEA. Grace and peace be yours, God our Father. We thank Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, for this great opportunity that He has given unto us that we can be up, alive, and well once more. So, right now, we'll be taking the prayer from um, Minister Adin. She'll be praying for revival. And I want everyone, please, to pray, Minister Adin, for revival, because as you know, this weekend will be the weekend of Trinidad and Tobago. Amen. So therefore, let's go and pray with her. Go, Minister. One moment, sir. Praise Jesus from whom all blessings flow. Bless God Almighty. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. So as we're getting ready for the prayers, believers, just get yourself together. Hallelujah. As we trust Jesus Christ for major breakthroughs. Um, a number of persons are already in Trinidad and others are going today, tomorrow, and straight into Friday. We trust the Lord Jesus Christ that it will be a great time. We are asking you know, please continue in prayer for us. Amen. We need your prayers as we head into the region. We don't take anything for granted. For there to be a great revival, we got to pray. We must pray. So we're asking you to be on board with us as we go hard in Jesus' name. Over to you now, Minister. Bless you, sir. Bless my name, Dominion. Hallelujah. Most righteous and eternal Father, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. There is indeed none like you, none to compare to you. You are awesome. And so, mighty God, as we come this morning, this day, Father, you said this is the day that the Lord have made. We have we will rejoice and be glad in it. And so, God, we thank you, mighty God, for your mighty hand. Oh, God, as we were counting down the days unto the revival where persons will be traveling, oh, God Almighty, the days have come where persons are traveling uh, now to the revival and so God mighty God as we place Trinidad and Tobago revival uh, before you thou knowest everything concerned the revival uh, you are the one that have ordained it uh, oh God and so today in the name of Jesus as your man's servant and the team uh, oh God uh, Lord look forward uh, mighty God to carry out your task to carry out your divine will concerning uh, Trinidad and Tobago I pray in the name of Jesus Christ for your grace and for your mercies. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your word declares, mighty God, that your grace is sufficient. Uh, and so, God, mighty 
God, as they travel, Lord God, uh, I pray for journeying mercies and Father, even now uh, for the very revival, I pray in the name of Jesus. Uh, may your hand rest upon the location even now. Uh, we send the blood of Jesus, mighty God, to the very location. We send the blood of Jesus, uh, oh God Almighty, to the very team. We send the blood of Jesus uh, to the mighty God, everyone that is on the ground, that is putting things in place. We send the blood of Jesus, uh, oh God Almighty, to the very mighty God's put a ground that the, the revival will be held that we pray in the name of Jesus against anything that comes to interrupt and disrupt. We come against the spirit of confusion uh, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every divisive plan uh, that the enemy of our orchestrated. You said, surely the net is set in vain of the eyes of the bird. So, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, Abba Father, O oh God Almighty, that your hand uh, that is not short will rest upon uh, the island of Trinidad and Tobago, uh, mighty God, Port of Spain, to be exact where the revival will be located. Uh, I pray in the name of Jesus from mighty God, Friday, February, uh, mighty God, March the 29th, from the first night, uh, O oh God of the revival that so will be one in the name of Jesus mighty God let there be a mighty outpouring of your spirit that draws men because your word declares mighty God that none come unto the father unless he's drawn by you and so in the name of Jesus we pray for a drawing today we pray mighty God that you oh God will saturate the very location in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth let it be noise abroad we pray Abba Father let there be an open and even experience. Uh, we pray, mighty God, for notable miracles, uh, for sign wonders uh, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uh, I pray, mighty God, those uh, that are struggling, uh, those mighty God that have lost faith, uh, those that don't know you, Jesus, let there be a mighty breaking out uh, of your spirit. Mighty God, let there be a revival uh, that someone, Jesus, will say, I have been revived. I have been refreshed. I have been renewed. Thank you, Holy Spirit, uh, for showing up and showing off uh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uh, someone, mighty God, that their life have gone dormant. Uh, I pray in the name of Jesus, uh, may your supernatural fire rest up uh, on mighty God, your people like never before. Uh, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ uh, for someone mighty God that is yearning and desiring to be baptized uh, by your spirit. Mighty God uh, will receive their baptism uh, of the Holy Spirit uh, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uh, we pray our Father even now, uh, oh God Almighty, let there be uh, oh Jesus, a mighty mover uh, that even mighty God, uh, the radio station, the tele television station, uh, oh God will hear about uh, that which the Lord is doing, uh, oh God Almighty, and it is marvelous uh, in the island of Trinidad and Tobago, like never before Jesus, uh, I pray mighty God, uh, even for your mighty God, your speaker, that you have ordained and set. Uh, oh God, I pray for the unction to function. Uh, I pray for your divine strength uh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Uh, we send the blood of Jesus. Marco Shatayamandaya. We send the blood of Jesus. Rebecca Sandarabaya. We send the blood of Jesus. Marco Shandarabaya. We send the blood. Rebecca we send the blood we send the blood of Jesus to Trinidad and to be a good to hear e the word of the Lord we send the blood Bakushandaya. we send the blood we send the blood Jesus and we pray in the name of Jesus uh, that preaching will be easy in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, uh, oh God Almighty, Marco Shataya Mandarabaya, oh God, every strong man uh, in the region right now, Ribako Shataya Mandaya, every resisting power, Roboko Shataya Mandarabaya, Ribanda Dabaku Shataya Mandaya, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ uh, that all power belongs unto God, uh, oh God, and you have given us, mighty God, uh, authority in the earth um, to have 
dominion. So every power must be subject to the power of the living God. So every strong man in that region that is mighty God putting up a resisting power. Ribaka Shataya Mandaya. We bind your forces now. We bind your plans. We bind Mako Shataya Mandaya. Every ass now that has been set up. Your agenda and your Mako Shataya Mandaya. Your programs we bind them in the name of Jesus and we lose the atmosphere to be conducive to the move of the Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh God, every power in the name of Jesus, uh, Rebecca Sataya Mandaya, we pray that the prince of the region uh, is no subject uh, to the power of the living God. Uh, we pray, mighty God, that you will release your archangel, uh, that is mighty God, uh, uh, Mandaya, that is in mighty God charge of that region, uh, mighty God to war against uh, every prince in that region now, uh, every prince that has arisen, uh, every prince that has uh, erected. Uh, Lord, I pray for angelic reinforcement. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, as the angels stand with the sword drawn with Joshua, we pray in the name of Jesus, let there be an angelic Marco Shataya Mandaya, Rebecca Sataya Mandaya, let there be an angelic release in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, oh God Almighty, Manda Dabaku Shataya, yes Lord, Mandu Yubuku Father, in the name of Jesus, we send the blood of Jesus, oh God. God Almighty to that resisting force. Ribaka Shataya Mandaya. Ribaka Sataya Mandaya. We send the blood. Rabandaya. We send the blood. Ribako Sandaya. Loose your whole. No. Mako Shataya Mandaya. We command you to loose your whole. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Ribaka Shataya Mandaya. Rabanda Dada Baku Sandaya. Or Ribando Yabuku Sandaya. Every I think Mako Sandaya that exalted you must come down in the name of Jesus. We command a tearing down. We command a pulling down in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rebecca Shataya Mandaya. Rabaka Sandaya, mighty and majestic one, we send the fire of God to consume Mako Shataya Mandaya, that which the enemy have set up, that which the enemy Mako Shanda Dada Baku Shandaya, in the name of Jesus, Rebaka Shandaya, we send the fire of the living God to consume your plans, to consume Jesus, Mando Yoboku Shandaya, the forces that has been erected in the name of Jesus Christ. Of Nazareth, every power must be subject to the power of the living God. So, in the name of Jesus Christ, we bind the forces of darkness, we shut down your works, we paralyze your hands and feet. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every monitoring power that has been released to monitor the progress of the revival, we speak to your eyes, be blind, we speak to your ears, be deaf, we speak to your mouth, be dumb, and we command your tongue to cut and Clip to the roof of your mouth in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Everything that has arisen to speak against the revival, to speak against the people of the living God, to speak against the deliverance of the people. Rebecca Shataya Mandaya, loose your whole in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every resisting power that wants to hold back the salvation of the people, the deliverance of the people, the healing of the people, every bewitchment power, we command Marco Satan. Let there be a breaking. Let there be a breaking. Let there be a breaking. By the anointing of the living God, you said the anointing will break the yoke. So we command a breaking in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Marco Shataya Manda da 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 Sandaya. Father, mighty God. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, Lord mighty God, that everything that was planted will be uprooted. Uh, everything that has been planted, we, we uproot you by the root. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, everything that was planted, we uproot you. Everything that was planted, we uproot you. Everything that was planted, we uproot you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, uh, everything that was orchestrated, uh, we send the blood of Jesus right now uh, and we override and overrule your plan in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, 
and we say let God arise and the enemies be scattered let God arise and the enemies be scattered concerning this revival in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth father mighty God you be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ we give you thanks we give you praise we give you honor in Jesus mighty name Common agreement, family. Common agreement by saying amen, amen, amen. Jesus, let's go, let's go. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, 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 Amen. Bless God, everyone. Thank you so much for being on once more. Yeah, another time, special greetings to the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the one which was and is to come. Amen. We are happy for Jesus. We love him without apology. Amen. As a matter of fact, let us find our reaction button, the loved one, and just let us cover the screen with the, our hearts. Amen. Demonstrate your love. Amen. Hallelujah. It may seem small, but exercise in church show your love show your love for jesus yes show your love for jesus in every way you can show your love for jesus we love you jesus we love you lord hallelujah tell him that you love him right now write it in the chat do all you can i love jesus amen i love jesus i love you jesus hallelujah amen we love jesus glory be to god and uh, and we pray to love him even more. Jesus, we pray to love him even more. My God, hallelujah. We love Jesus. Jesus, you are the one. Bless the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. 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 He's the real deal. My God, he is the real deal. Our God is indeed wonderful. So believers, grace and peace be unto you once more. Happy am I to be on. Glory be to God. And happy to see you again. As I said earlier, we are in, uh, I mean, this is the season of the, the week of traveling. A number of persons have traveled. They are already there in, uh, say in Trinidad. Some may be on right now and some sleeping. Some are in the air. But I decree coverage over everyone right now, coverage over those who have gone, coverage over those who are going, coverage, coverage, coverage over those who, um, who are en route right now as we speak. I decree and declare full blood coverage that the planes will not be picked up by the kingdom of darkness, that the individuals will not be picked up by the kingdom of darkness. I decree and declare full coverage in the name of Jesus Christ, to and from in the name of Jesus Christ. We cancel all the plots and plans of the adversary in Jesus' name. I come in agreement with Minister Adin, and I decree and declare it is settled. Amen. That there will be, it will be a wonderful time in that island of Trinidad. So family, bless you, bless you, bless you again to everyone that is on the Dominion meeting. So we're going to talk about some important stuff this morning and the altar. Yes, 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 yes. As we're getting ready to, uh, in a few days to close this series, but I'll share with you a few more things because believers at the end of the day, I hope you will, your takeaway will be you get to see how important it is to um, be dedicated to something. Yes, be dedicated to um, meeting the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, all of us should do that. 
put a time in place where we meet the Lord. So therefore, we pray at any time. We pray even anywhere. But even though we do that, we have a designated place in our homes that we say, you know, this is my meeting place. This is my meeting place. And you make that place beautiful. May that place clean. May that place special. Amen. And you put your scriptures, all the scriptures that you have there, your prayer request, um, your pictures for your relatives that you're praying about to be saved. You pray about those things. Amen. And ask God to save them. Ask God to deliver them. And you pray daily. Put your request there. The psalm says, make your request known to the Lord. So you have your request on your altar. Hallelujah. And you pray earnestly with your scriptures and go hard. Clean place, clean environment, um, a place where it's dedicated to him. That is his place. Believe us that long from now. And you keep doing it. I'm not, I'm not sure how many persons on used to watch Juanita Bynum in her early morning prayer meeting. And she said that the Lord, she used to get up at 5 a.m. in the morning. And there was a point in time whether she wanted to, yes or no. The Holy Spirit would just wake her up for that time of prayer in the morning. And as she kept on doing that morning prayer, brothers and sisters, it turned the United States upside down, especially New York. People were coming from all over early in the morning. Yes, for that morning glory prayer meeting. It was so powerful. That's one of the things that uh, meetings that help wanted to buy them to become who she is, along with the TDGX um, um, services, telling you prayer, consistent prayer, meeting place prayer will do wonders. Hallelujah. So I do encourage everyone that is hearing me, don't take this altar series lightly. No, because I say to you, the flip side of all of this, which I'm going to show you in a little while, that the kingdom of darkness, they are doing some things that mark it. If we don't stand strong, they'll wipe us out. But because we are covered with the blood of Jesus Christ, their works will never stand. A matter of fact, in the next few minutes, I will show you one of the reasons why some people are doing some bad things and it seems as if they're getting away. And it seems as if they're untouchable. It seems as if nobody can stop them. Well, you will see within the scriptures that is nothing new. Nothing new. Everyone must understand today that we are all traveling with a power. The question is, which power are you traveling with? This world is spiritual. It is spiritual. Everyone has, um, everyone is operating by a spirit, either the good spirit or the bad spirit. There is something that influences business. There is something that is influencing um, churches. There is something that influences company. There is a force. There is a force. So the question is, what have you done? To get that force in what have you done um so so believers on this note i want to say to persons don't be jealous of people with things don't allow yourself to covet anyone for anything or be envious of anyone because you don't know what covenant they have made and what they have done to achieve what they are achieving most likely some of us would never do what they are doing so that means if we're going to get through, it won't be by that route. Amen. And you, we have to have integrity. There are some videos going around. Um, if you watch it, you'll understand even more about this teaching that I'll be doing this morning to see that there is a spirit, there is a force behind basically everyone. If you're doing well, there's a force. There's a force. A matter of fact, if you're not doing well, there's a force too. So believers, we must understand that things are not just what it seemed to be. Amen. It's important for us to open our eyes, read the scriptures, and understand that the Apostle Paul speaks about powers, wickedness in high places, even low places too. My God. So these are things that I want us to get a clear understanding of. Are you with me, Dominion? Are you sleeping or are you with me? Because I want you to walk with me. Amen. Hallelujah. Yesterday, I showed you from the text how the altar had fight for you. Do you remember that? How the altar fought for Jacob. That Jacob was basically, they made an arrow. Levi and Simeon. They did something that was inappropriate. Amen. But 
the altar because they did what they should have and sought God for mercy. Amen. The Lord allowed the altar to fight for them. The Bible didn't state in it that they lift a sword again or they fought physically. No, the Bible teaches that it was the Lord God who fought for them through the uh, nations that are by, for, for the nations that were around them. May I use this opportunity this morning to say to every believer that is on all of us, we don't have to fight for ourselves in this time. If we go hard, the Lord will fight our battles. He will be an enemy to our enemies. Mm, Jesus, hallelujah. May I say this one more time. I say that our God will be an enemy to our enemies. You don't have to get out of order, out of character. No, ladies and gentlemen, all you need to do is build up yourself in prayer, build up your covenant in prayer, build up yourself in prayer, my God, and you will see what the Lord will do in your life, what he will do in your marriage. He will fight for your partner, Jesus, hallelujah. He will fight for your children. He will fight for your health. He will fight for your job. My God, he will fight for your well-being, Jesus, hallelujah. Someone get ready because there's about to be a fight. And a matter of fact, you know, we're, we're not, we, we, it's already done nevertheless. But what we're doing, we're coming in agreement with God, with the finished work of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So believers, um, let's look at um, two cases this morning. So I'm going to give you the, um, the, um, the negative case, and then I give you the positive case of an altar. All right. So what are we trying to show here this morning? I want to show you exactly one of the reasons, as mentioned before, why some people um, who are not in the faith seems as if they are getting away with some things. As I said before, there is a power behind all of that. Amen. Don't take it lightly. They are doing crime and it seems as if they're getting away. They are doing bad things and it seems as if they're getting away. Have you ever been there where you wonder, I mean, how is that person after doing so much things, they're not in prison? How is it that that person after doing so many things, they are still climbing? What is happening? Well, ladies and gentlemen, they are connected. They are connected to an altar. They are connected to a force. They are connected to something. You better pray for me, and I'll pray for you also, because these are this is what is happening. And our natural eyes, our eyes rather, need to be open to see. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go in um, Jesus. Praise God. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Um, let's go in the text. All right, now, in 2 Kings chapter 3, we must understand the backdrop of the text here that God had already given his manservant, Joshua. He had given his, his the people, he had given them the authority to win. Um, a matter of fact, victory was final. Victory was final in this case, and the kings were gathered together, rather, and the kings were, were going through to win the battle. Look at Second Kings. Second Kings. Um, um, Second Kings. This is where the kings gather, gather together, and they were approaching the Moabites, and they were about to defeat them. They were about to defeat them. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, let me. I really need a lot of part of verse, but let me get some from the beginning to help you all to get an understanding of this within context. Now Jeroboam, the son of Ahab began to reign over Israel in Samaria in the 18th year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and reigned 12 years. And he wrought evil in the sight of the Lord, but not like his father and like his mother, for he put away the image of Baal that his father had made. Nevertheless, he cleaved unto the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which made Israel to sin. He departed not therefrom. Um, don't really plan on explaining that so much, but I would say in this we see greater evil versus lesser evil. Amen. The evil of his parents versus the evil that he practiced. Um, brothers and sisters, I must say that there are levels to sin. There are levels to sin. Um, if the Lord permits it, I will show you some things at some point in time that there are levels to sin. And when sin reaches a certain level, it attracts the judgment of God. All right. So 
that's for another teaching. The word of the Lord says, and so and Misha, king of Moab, was a sheep master and rendered unto the king of Israel and had thousand thou, had thousand lambs and hundred thousand rams with the with the wool. But it came to pass when Ahab was dead that the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel, and King Jehoram went out of Samaria, out of Samaria the same time, and numbered all Israel. And when he went and sent to Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, saying, The king of Moab had rebelled against me, and will thou go up with me against Moab to battle? And he said, I will go up. I am as thou art my people and as thy people and thy hor my horses as thy horses. And he said, which they shall go up and answered the, the way through the wilderness of Edom. So now the king of Israel joined forces, amen, and they were um, en route now to go with, 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 Jeho with Jehoshaphat to fight against Moab. Because Moab, Moab had broken the relationship that they once had. So now, king of Israel, they have decided that they're going to fight them. That's what is happening here. Okay, as we go forward. The king of Israel went and the king of Judah. So king of Israel and king of Judah. And the king of Edom. And they fetched a compass. So three kings, king of Israel, king of Judah, king of Edom. They were going up against who? Moab. And they fetched a compass a compass of seven days' journey, and there was no water for the host and for the cattle that followed them. And the king of Israel said, Alas, the Lord hath called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. Well, that's what they assumed. But Jehoshaphat said, and Jehoshaphat represents the righteous king. Jehoshaphat said, Is there not hear a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of the Lord by him. Because by right, the practice through and then, no one would have gone forth to battle without communicating with God. Amen. Because they need, needed to know the end from the beginning, how the war would play out and what God's thing was. Ladies and gentlemen, that's why the word of the Lord says in all our ways, we should acknowledge him and he will direct our path. So important it is. It's nothing new. It's from the Old Testament into the New Testament. So now let's go. Jehoshaphat, who was a godly king, decided that he wanted to hear what was God's will. Jesus, walk with me, everyone. I need you this morning. I need you. Get thee. He says now, hallelujah. Get thee to the prophets of thy father. Hallelujah. So, well, and Elisha, verse 13, and Elisha said unto the king of Israel, what have I to do with thee, king of Israel now? He was speaking to Get thee to the prophets of thy father. He was upset. Because remember, if you remember the story of Elisha and his spiritual father, Elijah, they were always battling with Ahab and Jezebel. So it was a long time thing. He was upset with them because of what they were practicing. And so now he says, what have I to do with thee? Get thee to the prophets of thy father and to the prophets of thy mother. And the king of Israel said unto him, Nay, for the Lord hath called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. And Elisha said, The Lord of hosts liveth. And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts liveth before whom I stand, surely were it not, were it not for I, that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah. I would not look upon, look toward thee, nor see thee. So now he was about to receive an answer, not because of him, but because of the king of Judah, whose name was Jehoshaphat. Hallelujah. Believers, that's why it pays to be in good standing. It pays to practice what is right. Hallelujah. Jesus. Let's go. But now bring me a minstrel. And it came to pass when the minstrel played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, Thus said the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. For thus said the Lord, he shall not see wind, 
neither shall he see rain. Yet that valley shall be filled with water, that he may drink both he and your cattle and your beast. And this is but a light thing in the sight of the Lord. He will deliver the Moabites also into your hand. Watch this, believers. Remember that verse. The word of the Lord says, um, he will deliver the Moabites also into your hand. So it means that they will be victorious. That's what. So the man of God is telling them, the prophet was telling them that you will be victorious over the Moabites. God will give you victory. So two things now they are, they are receiving from the prophet. They are receiving um, water. Because the Bible teaches earlier that one thing is that they needed water. They were running out of water. So God says, I will supply you water, but I will supply your water miraculously. Amen. So dig ditches and they will be filled. <clears throat> God said, I'm going to give you water <clears throat> in a miraculous way. And secondly, they were now told that they would win the battle. Remember, focus on that. Focus on the fact that the prophet told them that they're going to win. Hallelujah. And win always means to defeat everything and take the territory. That's what win means. So let's go because we're looking at um, the altars. Hallelujah. So as we go into this now, and the Bible says, and he shall smite every fence city. This is of Moab. Hallelujah. And every choice city. Someone please type where we are so at least 12 persons can follow. Amen. And he shall smite every fenced city and every choice city. Hallelujah. Jesus. And shall fill every good tree and shall fell every good tree and stop all wells of water and mar every good piece of land with stones. And it came to pass in the morning when the meat offering was offered that behold, there came water by the way of Edom, hallelujah, and the country was filled with water. So one has already happened. It means that when he got up the next morning, Second Kings chapter 3, that water was provided. May I use this opportunity to let someone know right now, hallelujah, just to interrupt this to say to you, that God will provide for you supernaturally. Glory to God. There are persons who are hearing me right now. The Lord will bless you in a way that you least expect. He's about to use a medium, he's about to use an individual, he's about to use a company, he's about to do it in a way that you had no idea, hallelujah, that he could or would use that, that individual or person. Believers, God is about to do something supernatural for you and your family, you and your ministry. Watch what the Lord will do. And the man of God says in it, it's still but a light thing that God is about to do it in this way. Jesus, I hope you receive this because a blessing is coming your way. A miracle is coming your way. And it's coming in a way that you will have to testify. You must testify because you are going to know that God's signature is all over your miracle. Someone give God a praise right there, right now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So as we go forward, remember now, so two things, the water was prophesied and the water came. <clears throat> the next thing that was prophesied is that they would have defeated the Moabites. They would have. Amen. And remember now, the Moabites was considered to be a nation that was basically an outcast nation who practiced all kind of um, false worship. So they weren't worshiping the true and living God. They practiced sin. Amen. So now look at this. Well, let's go because what we're looking at is to see now that what happened here, God had already given them the victory. God told them that they would be victorious. And this is about to help someone who you got a word, but you're not seeing certain things. Let's go. Um, <clears throat> the word of the Lord says in it, oh Jesus, thank you, Holy Ghost. Um, Jesus, and verse 24, and they rose up early in the morning and the sun, okay, let's go back to verse 21. So water was provided. So go to verse 21. So now we're going for the victory. And when the Moabites heard that the kings were come up to fight against them, they gathered all that were able to put on armor and upward and stood in the border. And they rose up early in the morning and the sun shone up on the water and the Moabites saw the water on the other side as red as blood. Mm. Watch what they assume now. Watch what they assumed. 
Jesus. Hallelujah. The word, the word, verse 23 says, and they said, this is blood. The kings are sure are surely slain and they have smitten one another. Now, therefore, Moab to the spoil. They thought the kings had fought against each other and killed each other. So now they say, let us go and collect the spoils. Spoil in those days that when the army men went out, they carried valuable things with them. They carried valuable things with them, even silver and gold they had. So now Moab said, listen, we don't have to fight in this. It's already done. We're just going out to collect the spoils. That's what they thought. But look what's going to take place now. The word of the Lord, because remember, there was a prophetic word already that stated that they would, that children of Israel and the army that went ahead against Moab would defeat Moab. That was the word. So watch the word, follow the word, keep the word in your mind. So now as they go forward, Jesus, the Bible says here, and oh, glory. Jesus, we thank you. So as they went forward, the Bible says, truly said, verse, verse 24 now, and when they came to the camp of Israel, the Israelites rose up and smote the Moabites so that they fled before them. But they went forward smiting the Moabites, even in their country. And they beat down the fences, prophesied. Hallelujah. Prophecy coming to pass. And on every good, good piece of land, cast every man his stone and filled it. And they stopped all the wells of water and felled, and felled all the good trees only in Kerharsh. Kaharas left the, the, the stones thereof. How beat the slingers went about it and smote it. And the king of Moab saw the battle was too sore for him. Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it now. Watch it this. And believers, remember now, before I read verse 26, is something we need to understand. You see, the king now represents the leader, represents the organizer, represents the one who the master, the earthly mastermind behind whatever is happening. Always remember, you see, leaders are important because if the leader is out, everything scatters and the Bible says smite the shepherd and the sheep scatter. It's a principle. If, you, if the leader is out, the leader is a strong man. If the leader is out, everything else falls. But remember, if the leader remains, then the leader can build it back. Amen. The leader is able, because a leader, let me say this, whether the leader is on the right side or the wrong side, a leader is able to build a thing from scratch. That's why in the Old Testament, they always go for the king and they always go for the leaders because whenever a leader is alive, that leader is able to rebuild the thing and get it back up and put it in order. So most time, you have to get the strong man out. And remember now, we are not speaking about war here. We're just speaking from the scriptures just to show you exactly about altars and how it operates and to know that here what happened, everything is spiritual. Look at this now. If you follow me, you would understand here that the three kings got information and they got authority that God would be with them and God would bless them and they would take. And so far, so good it's happening. They are taking the cities. They took the wells. They took all of that as the Lord says. But watch verse 26, game changer. And when the king of Moab saw that the battle was too sore for him, he saw that he was outnumbered. He was being defeated. The Bible says he took with him 700 men and drew swords that drew swords to break through even unto the king of Edom. So he was saying, if I can't take them all out, three kings, three coming from three locations. If I can't take all these three kings out, then I will take out one. So he was focusing on Edom, the king there. So he took his men and he was going forward, but they could not. So he could not defeat them in any way, neither attacking three at the same time or trying to attack one at the same time. They couldn't. So now verse 27 says, then he took his eldest son that should have reigned in his stead, Jesus, and offered him for a burnt offering upon the wall, right in the middle of the warfare, right in the middle of the battle. 
while his men were dying. And while that was taking place, what he did, he pulled for his own son. His, I'm not talking a slave, a, not a soldier. He took his own son and laid his son there, killed his son up on the wall, up on the altar, the altar, Moab altar to their gods. Watch what took place. Let's see if it did anything. What um, uh, The Bible says, and he took his eldest son that should have reigned in his stead and offered him for a burnt offering upon the wall. And there was great indignation against Israel and they departed from him and returned to their own land. All of a sudden, the three armies, the three kings who were coming in invading everything, destroying everything, destroying and taking over completely. Believers, this man, most of his soldiers had already died. The city was basically covered. Everything was basically in the hands of the three kings. But when he did that, made that sacrifice of his son on the walls, right in the middle of all was taking place. The Bible said there was a great indignation. So all of a sudden, he hits the spirit realm that the king says, we're not going any further. We are going back. It's over. It's over. We are not going any further. We are turning back. We are going back. There's nothing said that they pursued and they killed the king. No, the war stopped right there. Because what happened? He raised, this was an evil altar. He raised an altar at the expense of his very son. I told you before that there are things that we are seeing happening. People reaching to a certain level in life, you don't know how they reach. You don't know. Brothers and sisters, sometimes this is at the expense of a partner. It's at the expense of a child's life. The expense of a relative, they are the expense of a good friend. Believers, this is what takes place in the dark world. You see it right here? It's in the scriptures. It's right here in the scripture. We are, you, you probably have heard about it before, that there are some people, they arise to certain levels in music, in, in, the, in business, in different things. But believers, the question is, do you know the sacrifice? Do you know the sacrifice? Some of those who reached a certain level and couldn't go any further, they couldn't do that kind of sacrifice. They said, no, it's too much. I can't give my mother. I can't give my father. I can't give my brother. I can't give my sister. I can't give my spouse. Because what happened? The kingdom of darkness will ask for something big. Jesus, something big, something heavy. Brothers and sisters, remember, According to the Old Testament principle, they would go in and wipe out everything, especially the king. In the hour, they would take the king as captive and keep the king as a slave. My God, in prison. No, not even that was done because that man knew something about the spirit realm. He knew something as to how to fight. If you notice there, at that point in time, the battle was no longer about fist to fist, sword to sword, slingers to slingers. At that point in time, it was in the spirit realm. My God, this shows now that what happens in on earth has a lot to do with what happens in the spirit realm. He did something there at the expense of his eldest son. My God, is there anyone following me right now? I'm not even going to give you the next one I have, right? I'm just going to leave this to let it soak for a while. Brothers and sisters, this is it. Relatives who have climbed, you don't know what it is that they have done. Businesses, people, you don't know. And may God help us that some of us don't even know either. Because believers, it probably would be so shocking to know people who are at certain levels. Because I'm telling you, everybody has to work with their spirit. This is what it is. The world is spiritual. I mean, whether they want to believe it is or no, everybody, we work with spirits. Everyone who's in the church. The Bible says in John 24 that our God is a spirit. Yes. So we work with spirits. Our God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Our God is not physical. He's spirit. He is spirit. And he is who we work with. 
mighty God, where there are others who work with other spirits, other forces. They have other forces. Amen. So the question is, look at it now. If Jesus Christ didn't die for us, then we would make sacrifices too. But I must say to you, from the Old Testament straight back, the Lord God has never been into human sacrifice. If you notice, the question, which I'll talk some more about, Abraham being asked to offer his son, which he was about to, but he was never done. It was only a test. Never done. Never done. So therefore, we are not into human sacrifice. Worse yet, we are not into any blood sacrifice. I have to keep repeating this in our, in our messages and videos for you to understand. We don't do blood sacrifices, neither of animals or humans. So listen, if you should ever be approached by anyone, that for you to reach to a certain level, for you to climb up, for you to be promoted, for you to become the greatest in your time, in your company, in your soul, that you need to make that kind of sacrifice. You hear me? Pull out the blood. Call upon the name of Jesus. Resist that force. Send it back from whence it came. Brothers and sisters, we are not and we must never, ever be a part of that. Never, ever be a part of that. Hallelujah. Market, is that strange? If persons who are on right now will say, you were once approached by someone, some power, some entity to say to you, I can do this for you. I can do this. I can change your life. I can transform your life. But if you become a part of this organization, part of this movement, a part of this so-and-so, then guess what happened? All you need to do is to do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, and you will arise and climb. Ladies and gentlemen, hear what we say. Let me say it from the church perspective also. First of all, if the power is not of God, we don't want it. We don't want any rings. We don't want any marks. We don't want any, any stuff. We don't want anything that is unlike God. We are willing to wait at the altar, the righteous altar, until he endowed us with enough to do his job. But we want nothing from the marine kingdom, nothing from the other kingdoms. We want nothing else, nothing else. The ministry that we carry in this time must be pure. It must be authentic. It must be real. It must be from the Holy Spirit. If our eyes are going to be open and it's not by the Holy Spirit, well, we don't want it. If our hands are going to be empowered and it's not by the Holy Spirit, we don't want it. If we can't see, see, see the work of the living God by our eyes when he permits it, let it not be so. Because in this season, believers, there are many people who are hungry for power. One, hungry for power. And so hungry to demonstrate power that they will cross. And there are people who are hungry for money that they are so hungry that they will cross line. My God, brothers and sisters will cross no line in this season. I show it in your text that guess what happened? There are people who are connected. So some of them you see doing some things. The reason why so-and-so is not happening is because of their kind of sacrifice that they are making. And it's not always human sacrifice. They have other sacrifices that they will do and offer until they reaches that level. Believers, I hope you have been blessed by this one this morning. Amen. Tomorrow morning into the rest of the week as we go forward, there's much more as we looked. And, but I wanted to show you this one, which I did sometime last year. But for those persons who are hearing it for the first time, is to is for you to open your eyes to realize that life is not just as it looks. And please, once more, I say this for the second time. Never get jealous of anyone who's wearing their brand name stuff, expensive stuff, driving their expensive vehicle, living in their expensive houses or mansions and having their billions of dollars. Ladies and gentlemen, don't allow yourself ever, ever to be at the place where you start to desire what they want. Listen to me. Stick with God and in due season, he will give you what you need. Don't sell your soul. Don't come in agreement with any other spirit. Trust in the Lord. Trust Jesus Christ. Listen, Jesus is real. I'm telling you, Jesus Christ, the son of the living God is real. My God, and he's able to bless us. The Bible teaches us that we were once strangers from the commonwealth of Israel, but drawn nigh by the power of by the blood of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, the blessings of Abraham are yours and they are mine. Amen. So therefore, let us trust God. Let us apply what he said we should apply. Let us pray.
Let us fast. Let us read the word. Let us sow our seeds as God said we should. Give our tithe to our church as we should. Do these things. Wait upon the Lord in due season. He will bless you. He will bless you. Amen. In Psalm, in Psalm, in the in the Psalm, the Bible says, Ask of me, and I will give you the heathen as an inheritance, and the uttermost part of this world as your possession. Ask of me. So ask God, because believers, as I speak today, the blessings of the Lord they are upon you. The blessings of the Lord are upon you. My God, He says, Give and it will be given back to you. Good measure. Press down, shaken together, running over, will men bring into our bosoms. So I want you to continue to trust the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope you have received the word this morning. If you have received, please unmute and give God a mighty shout of praise. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen, believers. I am so happy that God has given us grace for us to be here this morning to receive his word. Um, also, a few reminders before we go for a prayer over you and release you. Um, just remember, this weekend will be a weekend to remember. Um, also, we have Beyond the Four Walls Ministries, which was announced yesterday. Just a reminder for all those persons who are in South Carolina. Mm. Yes, the East Southern Eastern Revival. Yes, Southern Eastern Revival will be on this weekend. And you can't afford to miss this. Um, we heard Bishop spoke about it yesterday. Please remember them in your prayers. The, the information was posted in the Revival in the City Group. So look at it. So if you're in the area, please go over and support this event on March 29th. So starting Friday through to March 1st. And you heard that they will be having a March also. So please go by and support if you can. And let us remember them in our prayers as they continue to do kingdom business. Yes. And as you heard it before, this weekend we are, we will be in Trinidad for the first revival in the city 2024. I hope you have the calendar to see some of the places that we are heading into for 2024. We have a number of other persons. We still yet to update our calendar for some of the places, but just to let you know that we are heading into a number of region places for this year. Uh, so therefore, a revival in city may be coming to your area. Come out and support. If you can't come physically, then be with us on YouTube um, or Facebook. It will be coming live from the nations that we go to. Um, as you know, we are in this together. There are over 42 persons, about 42 persons who have who are traveling into Trinidad this weekend for that event. Isn't God amazing? 
Hallelujah. Clap your hands together for Jesus, believers. God is doing this. Um, they are, it will be, and there'll be a number of activities on the ground in Trinidad starting from Friday. I was just trying to bring my, my, my info, my up here to show you. But please be in prayer. We start with a motorcade in Trinidad on Friday, going around from different stops and locations um, with our host, Bishop Anthony Chandler who is leading the process, we will be praying at different locations and, short, and sharing short word. That will be on Friday. Um, and Saturday, there will be um, a giveaway. As I told you before, is that um, our barrels are basically not there as yet. We The barrels that we have all come together and shipped for the island of Trinidad, they are not there as yet. It won't be until after the, um, after the, the uh, event. But... But nevertheless, what we'll be doing is that we have spoken and we want you to know because we're very transparent. Anything we ask for, I want you to know exactly how we do it. So what happened, the barrels will be there ready after Easter. Because it's going to be after the school term, we have given the permission to, to Bishop for him to keep the items until September so that um, they will we have a big giveaway in September to the students um, in Trinidad. So we have barrels from the States, barrels from from um from here in Canada, but those will be given out in Sept August, heading to September. But what we are all doing now, a group of us who are going in, we will be um please remember it. Yes, uh, we have bought some snacks. They call it Easter snacks that we are taking down so that we can give them to say, at least we have something now, but the greater portion they will get in due season um, as we do that. So believers, it's the Lord's doing. You remember last year, we saw the flag of Canada just before us. And no more, it's not just a prophetic word anymore. It is now a reality that it will be revival in the city in that location. We are believing God that souls will be saved. We are believing that um, many will be um, restored to the faith and be strengthened as we go to stand with the men of God and women of God in the island of Trinidad. Amen. To bear up their arms and to preach the word and do ministry as the Lord leads. So we are we are really believers. I realize there's something that even though it's the Lord's work, we have to ask the Lord. Amen. That's how it works. Even though it is the Lord's doing, we have to always seek his very presence and go back to him and bring back the vision to him. So hence we are doing what we're doing as we are trusting the Lord Jesus Christ for a major breakthrough. When we leave there, remember we're going to be in the States. We're going to be in the States. The next revival will be on June, first weekend of June, right in um, New Jersey. Yes, New Jersey. Patterson is going to be another wonderful one. So we will be, the flyers right here. Thank you so much, team members, for sharing. You can look at it there so you can know where we're going next and where it's going to be after that one as we keep the train going. Also, a number of persons have been asking about the seven last words that we normally do on the platform yearly in the Easter service. Yes, we were wondering if we should, but because of the fact that you have communicated, we will be having it. So this Friday, this Friday from the 9 a.m. watch to 12 noon will be the seven last words of Jesus. It is always a wonderful, it's a seven wonderful time. Seven speakers, seven last, last words of Jesus Christ will be on as of this Friday. Looking forward for it also. Um, it's going to be a grand time. So don't ever feel as if, well, because we're not in Trinidad with us, we don't have you covered. You are covered. So um, for all those persons who can, I know that there are many persons who are on you'll be at your physical church and that's good that's very good for those who can't then we're looking forward to be um we looking forward to be with you okay amen thank you so much um um rev for being with us where this is concerned i think bishop raymond birch is on amen bishop can you greet us is the bishop if, if you are there and you can, then it will be so nice to hear from you. Bishop has been on with us um, for, let me see if you are able to. Uh, Bishop is the senior bishop for the New Testament church. A wonderful spirit he carries. Amen. And so, yes, Bishop, feel free to bring us greetings this morning. As, although we are looking forward to hear much more from you in due season. Amen. And bless you. Good morning to each and every one of you. And we do honor you, Bishop, for your kingdom work. 
But what a powerful time this has been for each and every one of us uh, to be revived and be refreshed and to be in the presence of the Lord early in the morning. And so we just uh, bring abundant blessings from the uh, New Testament uh, Church of God, uh, New Jersey Church of God here, and uh, look forward to partnering together to see how God will advance his kingdom uh, through us here on earth. And so we speak blessings and uh, look forward to a great opportunities, uh, doing a wonderful work. Thank you so much for your faithfulness. Kingdom blessings. Uh, Mother Father, Bishop, as you're on that, if you don't mind, can you release a blessing upon us for the trip we will be going on this week in Trinidad? Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Father, you are the God who goes before us. You already made a way for everything to happen. We ask that as the feet of the man and women of God step on the ground of Trinidad Tobago, that the Holy Spirit would empower them with such a force that every darkness would have to disperse. Every uh, place that there is not light, light will be shed. Hearts will be mended. Brokenness would be, Lord God, made whole in the name of Jesus. Father, we declare, we declare now in the name of Jesus that life will be restored to the kingdom. Sick bodies will be healed. In the in the name of Jesus, miracles, signs, and wonders will follow the ministry for your glory. We pray Psalm 91 protection over them as they travel, that no evil will come nigh their dwelling in the name of Jesus. We bless the entire trip for your glory. We welcome you, Father, that you may be glorified through the servants of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. And please type your amen, everyone. Bishop, thank you so much. We really appreciate you. And we also please use this opportunity, sir, to tell you that the news is going around of the great job you have been doing in New Jersey. And it's a wonderful thing when there's good report. So may the Lord continue to bless you as you have also created a major impact in that region in your time up to now. And we believe that it will even get better in Jesus' name. May the Lord bless you and your wife and those who are standing with you and extend your boundaries and your borders as you continue to fulfill the work that God has commissioned you to do in the earth realm. Thank you, King. Kingdom blessings. Bless you, Bishop. All right. So, family, grace and peace be unto you. Um, we have received the prayer. I decree and declare grace over everyone right now as we are about to depart for this first or this um, segment. I decree and declare grace upon you today, divine coverage. We cancel all the plans and plots of the adversary, renounce the forces of darkness, and decree and declare that the enemy's work will never ever manifest in Jesus' name. We decree and declare that you are fully covered, your family is covered by the grace of Jesus Christ. And as you go forward, I pray that you'll execute the words of Jesus Christ. You will carry out his mission. You will evangelize. My God, you will open your mouth and you will speak to everyone who you can. And I pray as you speak, let there be conviction. Let there be conviction in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. Amen and amen. So, family, bless you. Pastor Jean from England, grace and peace be unto you. Pastor Brian. Bless you. Bless you so much, woman of God. We are still waiting to hear from you, Pastor. Amen. We are waiting to hear from Pastor Brian. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless you, everyone. Lots of love to you. And you have a blessed day. Remember now, there is a session that starts at 9 a.m. All these sessions are powerful sessions. Yes, all these. As someone testified a few days ago, said, Bishop, I really don't know which one I can miss because all of these are powerful sessions. And that is so true. If you listen, tune in, they are all good, different speakers, different topics as we go. Even though now I must say that maybe this session will be the longest you hear word because we have increased our prayer time even more since we are in our counting down season. Believers, this is the Lord's doing and it is indeed marvelous. We give all praises to the Lord God Almighty. Amen as he continues to lead us um there's a hand that is up um lady doreen 
Good morning. Good morning, Good morning, Good morning. Can you can you can you repeat for me? I'm not hearing clearly. Nadia Jackson is going to speak tonight. Oh, Pastor Jean. Oh, Pastor Nadia Jackson. Okay, okay, okay. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Thank you so much. We're looking forward to hearing Pastor Jean, um, Pastor Nadia. That's that's what the nine p.m. or the twelve p.m. Um, she's coming on. It's your tree. Oh, at 3 a.m. Yeah, One. She, she, she's always seven, seven in the UK. Amen. Amen. We're looking forward to this is England. So uh, we're looking forward to hearing from her. And it was so nice hearing from you too, Lady Nikki T. And Pastor Jean, Pastor Brian, thank you so much. Our prayers be with you and your entire family. Um, you're a blessing. It was nice having that conversation with you a couple of weeks ago. And may his grace continue to be upon you and the entire ministry. Lady Nikki T, you did a wonderful job. May you keep it up. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Have a safe travel. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bless you. All right, family. Grace and peace be unto everyone. Have a blessed day. God bless the bishop. Have a blessed day, bishop. God bless the bishop. God bless the bishop. God bless you. 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 God bless you.